Happy Sabbath, church. Um, do I need to introduce myself? I probably should. Well, my name is Crystal Eskelson. I am a member at this church. I'm also an adjunct professor at Andrews University in the Master of Public Health program there. I'm also a student completing my doctoral degree in public health with an emphasis in preventive care at Loma Linda University. So if you notice in our worship songs, we did um, some spirituals, or Negro spirituals as they're traditionally called. And so that's gonna be our focus today, slave songs. Ephesians 5, 19 tells us, Thank you. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your hearts to the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the Sabbath day. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for life, even amidst this tiring world. Lord, I thank you for music. Thank you for hope. I pray that you please send us your Holy Spirit to be with us now as we learn about slave songs. Lord, not just about the temporal themes that we will explore in this sermon, but also the eternal implications. I pray that you please bless us and help us to move when you um, inspire us to do so. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I have some Jamaicans here. So, Charles, who's this? <laughs> Kirk, who's this? Nanny. Nanny of the Maroons. So, Nanny is actually one of the national heroes of Jamaica. And Nanny is, was, rather, a slave brought from Ghana to Jamaica around the 17th century. And I remember as I was growing up, my grandmother would always tell us stories about Nanny. And uh, my grandmother, <laughs> she delighted in telling us how Nanny fearlessly fought against first the Spanish and then the British, which later occupied Jamaica. And um, she told me these stories because she could trace her ancestry to the Maroons. Um, there is a very high likelihood that if you have ancestry in the Caribbean, South, or North America, you are the descendant of a victim of slavery, specifically the Atlantic slave trade. Of course, that likelihood is higher if you are black or phenotypically black, or if you have more than six generations in any of these places. So, I am a descendant of slaves. Many of you are descendants of slaves. You know, there is this fascination with slavery as it was practiced in the Americas. And uh, people often make the argument, well, why? I mean, slavery has always existed. In fact, the Bible talks about slavery. And scholars have gone back and forth trying to explain our fascination with slavery as it was practiced in the Americas. Um, there are many theories. One of them is, well, um, is the first time that we saw slavery practiced based on race. In biblical times, slavery was based on status. It was based on religion. Um, you became a slave if you were taken as a prisoner of war, or if you had a debt to repay. But in the Americas, it was unique because it was solely based on race. Another one was that slavery in America was very brutal. Um, historians believe that there has never been a form of slavery that was as barbaric as slavery in the Americas was. And then the third theory is that, well, it had this peculiar mixture of being practiced by people who claimed they were Christians and under the guise of missionary work, enlightening the enslaved people. Ellen White speaks of this phenomena. She says, in this land of light, a system is cherished 
which allows one portion of the human family to enslave another portion, degrading millions of human beings to the level of the brute creation. The equal of this sin is not to be found in heathen lands. I just want you guys to keep that in mind. She goes on to say, God is punishing this nation for the high crime of slavery. He has the destiny of the nation in his hands. He will punish the South for the sin of slavery. So this is before the Civil War. And the North for so long suffering its overreaching and overbearing influence. And she also talks later on about how the effects of slavery will be felt to the end of time. And we see that now. Um, the lasting effects of slavery include racism, and that affects a large portion of Americans. Um, and if you are black in America, it doesn't matter where you're from, you have at some point, and, or probably will, experience racism and prejudice. There is a unique artifact of slavery, and that is Negro spirituals. Or as I said, spirituals, sometimes um, some of us don't have the card to say Negro spirituals, so you can say spirituals. Um, they're also called work songs, African American spirituals, if you want to be politically correct. I really like Negro spirituals. And Negro spirituals often had two themes. They often spoke of hope and salvation. Frederick Douglass, who was himself a former slave, and then later on an abolitionist, says, spirituals told a tale of woe. There were tones loud, long, and deep. They breathed the prayer and complaint of souls boiling over with the bitterest anguish. Every tone was a testimony against slavery and a prayer to God for deliverance from chains. You know, during the Civil Rights Movement, Negro spirituals or spirituals were also used in protests and marches. In fact, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., in his famous I Have a Dream speech, referenced a Negro spiritual in that famous line, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. That's actually from a Negro spiritual. So if you remember, we said that there was this strange mixture of how slavery was practiced. One of the theories was that it was practiced by people who proclaimed to be Christians, and many of them believed that they were doing the work of God. However, um, that's debatable if they really were convinced by that because slaves were denied education. If they received any spiritual instruction, it was carefully curated. By that I mean uh, if they were read to from the Bible, passages that seemed to approve slavery were frequently wet, read, and passages that opposed slavery were conveniently left out. In fact, there was even a slave Bible that omitted any references to freedom or any allusion to slavery being a bad thing. Yolanda Smith in the Bible and Song Reclaiming African American Spiritual says, enslaved Africans prohibited from learning to read and write passed on valuable life lessons from the scriptures and other wisdom sources through the spirituals. Spirituals were their channel to the word of God. So you can see out of the suffering of slavery, spirituals were a way, a way for these uneducated people to understand the messages that were presented to them from the Bible. Frederick Douglass, in My Bondage and My Freedom, says, a keen observer might have detected in our repeated singing of, O Canaan, sweet Canaan, I am bound for the land of Canaan, something more than a hope of reaching heaven. We meant to reach the north, and the north was our Canaan. And so while 
the spirituals did speak of these eternal truths, there are also codes. And the spirituals often talked of the Underground Railroad, which was a system that helped enslaved people leave the South to the North, where they could be free. And in fact, um, the Underground Railroad has some stations here in Michigan. Um, there's Schoolcraft, which is around here. There's also Battle Creek. Fun fact, a lot of early Adventist pioneers were abolitionists, and they actually worked on the Underground Railroad. So that's something for us to not feel proud about, but you know, that's something to acknowledge. And also Detroit was another station on the railroad. And so many spirituals alluded to the Underground Railroad. For instance, Swing Low Sweet Chart, which we sang as part of the melody. Now, of course, it, it would bring the mind to the story of Elijah being taken up by chariots of fire to heaven, and also bring the mind to this verse in Psalm 68, verse 17 and 19, which says, the chariots of God are myriads, thousands upon thousands. The Lord is among them as at Sinai in holiness. Blessed be the Lord who daily bears our burden, the God who is our salvation. But, as I said, they're also a code. And so, when you heard Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, you knew that the Sweet Chariot actually was another name for the Underground Railroad. And when it swung low, meant it was coming south. Coming for to take me home means it was going north. So you had to be ready. When you heard that song, you had to be ready. Another beautiful Negro spiritual steal away. Now, it would bring to mind Psalm 77, verse 18 and 20. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind. The lightnings lit up the world. Remember, steal away, my Lord calls me by the thunder. The earth trembled and shook. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. And you can see the themes here of salvation, right? There's always this allusion to salvation, to a rescue, to escape. But steal away also alluded to escaping slavery. You would steal away, right? So the slave masters would, you know, be sitting on his porch while the slaves were working, and they'd be singing, steal away. And he's like, oh, look, missionary work is going well. Well, nighttime, the slaves would steal away from the plantation, and they'd be gone. Then we have wade in the water. Of course, this alludes to various verses in the Bible. There is John 5, 2 through 9. For an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever then first, after the stirring up of the water, stepped in, was made well from whatever disease with which he was afflicted. And of course, Exodus 12, 51. And on that same day, the Lord brought the sons of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their hosts. And, um, of course, this is also alluding to escaping slavery. Um, water often represents the rivers that separated the south and the north. So like the Mississippi or the Ohio River. And to wade in the water was a way to tell the slaves to get in the water so that you could throw off the slave catcher's dogs from your scent. So there's something interesting about Negro spirituals. As I said, there's, there's debate on, or there has been debate on who can sing these songs. Um, some people are uncomfortable with people who do not have ancestry in slavery, singing these songs. And to a certain degree, there is exclusivity when it comes to the singing of spirituals. Langston Hughes, who is a poet and a key figure in the Harlem Renaissance, says, when the spirituals came into being, one of the trials and tribulations, frustrations and bewilderments of slavery, they must have had an intense 
an immediate meaning for the people who made them up and who sang them out of their hearts in the dark hours of bondage. In the days when slaves had neither freedom nor doctors, song must have been a great factor in soothing the wounds of flesh and soul. And so what Hughes is saying here is that there is something in the voices of those who are suffering when they sing these songs. And it gives an, an extra um, meaning to the songs. But there's also inclusivity. Hughes also says, once a Negro spiritual is freed as it is sung for a friend or foe to enjoy impartially, like all the common gifts of God or nature, the songs may then belong to anyone. So anyone can sing a Negro spiritual. Well, what does that mean for us? Whether you can trace your ancestors to an earthly institution of slavery or not, it's all the same. Because we are all bound by a greater, more insidious institution of slavery. That is the slavery of sin. Romans 3.23 tells us, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. John 8.34 also tells us, Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is the slave of sin. So we were all slaves. And I, I, I want to use the past tense because when Jesus came, he gave us the victory over slavery. As we are, we're all slaves, rather, it is only natural for the Bible to have its own spirituals or its own slave songs. And the two most notable are the Song of Moses and Miriam and the Song of Moses and the Lamb, which is basically a remixed version of the Song of Moses and Miriam. So here it is, the Song of Moses and Miriam. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. This is just an excerpt, by the way. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. Your right hand, O Lord, is majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In your loving kindness, you have led the people whom you have redeemed. And you can see how the slaves of America identified with the plights of the Jewish people and borrowed a lot of the themes from the Hebrew slaves. Ellen White in the Voice and Speech and Song says of the Song of Moses and Miriam, this song and the great deliverance which it commemorates made an impression never to be effaced from the memory of the Hebrew people. From age to age it was echoed by the prophets and singers of Israel testifying that Jehovah is the strength and deliverance of those who trust in him. Now, the Song of Moses and the Lamb, it, it's straddling both a slave song and the song of the redeemed. It's found in Revelation 15, 3 through 4. It says, and they sang the song of Moses, the bondservant, or the slave of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, O Lord God, the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy, for all the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been re revealed. And again, like Negro spirituals, there is this theme of exclusivity, right? In Revelation 14, 3, it tells us, And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000, and we know that's a symbolic number, who had been purchased from the earth. So there's that exclusivity there. Not everyone can sing this song, right? Only those who have been redeemed. And then White in Maranatha says, none but the 144,000 can learn that song. 
for it is the song of their experience, an experience such as no other company has, has ever had. And if you remember, we talked about Negro spirituals. We said there was something in the timber, in the tones, in the voice of slaves and their descendants when they sang these songs. And so there, it, it has a, a unique or special meaning to those who have that experience or have a history of that experience. But it also has inclusivity. Ellen White says, that song does not belong to the Jewish people alone. It points forward to the destruction of all the foes of righteousness and the final victory of the Israel of God. In freeing our souls from the bondage of sin, God has wrought for us a deliverance greater than that of the Hebrews at the Red Sea. Like the Hebrew host, we should praise the Lord with heart and soul and voice for his wonderful works to the children of men. So, the song belongs to everyone who is a slave or was a slave, and that means the song belongs to all of us. Hebrews 2, 14, 14 through 15 says, Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same, that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. There's a Negro spiritual that um, terms the devil as that old slave master. And he, he truly is the greatest, the ultimate slave master. But the good news is that Jesus died for our sins and he gave us victory over sin. And if you remember this, the song that we sang, Ain't That Good News. Again, in freeing our souls from the bondage of sin, God has wrought for us a deliverance greater than that of the Hebrews at the Red Sea. Like the Hebrew host, we should praise the Lord with heart and soul and voice for his wonderful works to the children of men. So, as I said, the song of Moses and the Lamb which is a remix of the song of Moses and Miriam, is both a song of slaves, or a slave song, and the song of the free. In Maranatha, Ellen Y says, the years of eternity as they roll, and I think this is so beautiful, the years of eternity as they roll will bring richer and still more glorious revelations of God and of Christ. As knowledge is progressive, so will love, reverence, and happiness increase. The more men learn of God, the greater will be their admiration of his character. As Jesus opens before them the riches of redemption and the amazing achievements in the great controversy with Satan, the hearts of the ransomed thrill with more fervent devotion and with more rapturous joy they sweep the harps of gold and 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands of voices unite to swell the mighty chorus of praise. I don't know about you guys, but um, this world is no fun. And the Christian walk is difficult. And As Paul says, sometimes we do what we, we don't want to do, right? And if we're not grounded in Christ, we are slaves to sin. Um, the past couple months have been very difficult for me. Um, and I hope that you get a sense of victory from this sermon. Um, but when I was doing the sermon, I was actually very depressed. Um, but it was actually very uplifting to me as I was doing this sermon. But I was very depressed because I was thinking of all these trials that not only happened to me in my life, but to other people. 
And there are some people who go through life just suffering. And there is no reprieve from the suffering while they're here on earth. And so all their lives, they've felt the effects of the slavery of sin. Um, and in fact, that's been the experience of many people who are slaves. They were born in slavery and they died in slavery and they never knew freedom. But that doesn't have to be our lot in life, right? Um, yes, we're born in slavery, but we have been redeemed and we can overcome. We have to choose. I want to end again hearkening back to that Negro spiritual that Dr. King referenced in his famous speech. Essentially, the song of Moses and the Lamb can be tied up in these two verses. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Do you want that to be your refrain? I want that to be my refrain. And I hope that when we get to heaven, I'll see you there, and I can join Sofika with her boundless energy in singing, and I can join Lyndon as he loudly and uh, spiritedly sings, and we can make the courts of heaven ring. And so I, I pray, my prayer for you is that um, you don't have to live as a slave, and I, I pray that you will choose freedom and freedom is in Christ.